Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about the histology of the large intestine. The large intestine include the cecum, the bottom appendix, ascending column, the transverse column, the descending column, sigmoid column, sigmoid column, the rectum, and the anal canal. The large intestine has tinea coli outside. This is a band of longitudinal muscle layer. We have three tinea coli, and we are seeing this one here. Other side has two more. And we have also the appendicis epiploica, that is the pocket of fatty tissue on the outer surface of the large intestine. So if we go to the histology of large intestine, then we'll get it has mucosa. Mucosa has three parts, the lining epithelium. This is simple columnar epithelium. We have a lot of goblet cell. So the mucosa composed of the lining epithelium, goblet cell, the neuroendocrine cells, and we have the lamina propria. There is a loose connective tissue, loose connective tissue, then muscularis mucosa here. Muscularis mucosa has two layers, inner circular layer, outer longitudinal layer. Then we have very vascular submucosa. There is a dense irregular connective tissue. Then we'll get the muscularis externa, this two layer, inner circular muscle layer, outer thin longitudinal muscle layer. This longitudinal muscle layer in three places are very much thick and this is, these are called tinea coli and they help in hostration and also help in peristalsis. So we got the, the mucosa and we have the simple tubular intestinal gland also called crypts of liver cone where multiple openings of these, these are the openings of the crypts of liver cone. This is a non-branched simple tubular gland of the intestine. And we have lamina propria in between the in between the the crypts of liver cone. This is the intercriptal area, and if we have blood vessel there. It is loose connective tissue, but there is no lymphatic lymphatic vessel here. We have some solitary lymphatic nodule, and we have also gall. That is the gut associated lymphoid tissue. We have plenty of lymphocyte, but there is no lymphatic vessel in the intercriptal area. Okay, so these are the identifying points. You have to note these identifying points. Lining epithelium, we have plenty of goblet cell. Number of goblet cell increases as the, the lower part of the large intestine. As a whole, goblet cell number is more than that of the small intestine. We have a few new enteroendocrine cells. We have the columnar absorptive cell, also called colonocytes, lamina propria, muscularis mucosa, submucosa, muscularis externa. And we have the parasympathetic nerve plexus between the muscle. There is called myentric plexus or orbex plexus. There is a derivative from the neural crest cell that is essential for the peristaltic movement. Cirrhosa is lined by mesothelium or visceral peritoneum, that is simple squamous epithelium. And part of the large intestine is retroperitoneal, like that of the ascending column and the descending column. So the posterior part is covered by the adventitia, not by the cirrhosa.
So the mucus of the large intestine penetrated by numerous simple tubular intestinal gland called crypts of liver cone. So these are the crypts of liver cone. This is the intercryptal space. There's no lymphatic vessel there. Okay. So no lymphatic vessel in the intercryptal lamina propria. And the large intestine is different from small intestine because there is no penet cell at the base of the crypts of liver cone. It is only present in the cecum, but most of the part of the, of the large intestine, the crypts of liver cone or tubular intestinal gland has no penet cell, no villi, no plica circularis in the wall of the large intestine. So in the in the crypts of liver cone, we'll get the adjoptic cell also called colonocytes. These are columnar cell with microvilli. And we have the goblet cell that secretes the mucus. It's very essential to lubricate the passage because we have around nine, nine liters of fluid in the intestine. And most of the fluid is absorbed. Only 100 milliliter of fluid passes along with the feces. So we need lubrication that is done by the goblet cell. Here's the nucleus. These are the, the granules, the mucus granule that will come out and that lubricate the lumen of the large intestine. We have the regenerative cells or the cells from where the other cells will, will, will develop. Okay. And we have the enteroendocrine cell that is also present in the crypts of liver cone. So this is crypts of liver cone. Okay. The lamina propria of the large intestine, it has collagen table, pericryptal fibroblast sheet, and galt. Galt means gut associated lymph lymphatic tissue. And lymphatic vessels are absent here, but we have lymphatic nodule in the lamina pro propria, lower part of the base of the cryptolabarcon, and those lymph lymphatic nodule has efferent vessel that penetrate the muscular mucosa and connect to that of the of the submucosal lymphatic tissue. So lymphatic vessels are absent here in the intercryptal space, but with the basal area, we have the lymphatic nodule that may extend up to submucosa and that lymphatic nodule ha has the efferent lymphatic vessel that will penetrate the muscular mucosa. Okay, here is the anorectal junction and we have the permanent fold in the permanent transverse fold in the rectum area that contains circular muscle layer and part of the longitudinal muscle layer lying by the mucous membrane. Okay, we have longitudinal fold. These are anal columns. We have anal sinuses. And here the rectum will be will be changed into anal canal. We have the colorectal zone here. Still, it is simple columnar epithelium cell then anal transitional zone. Here the simple columnar cell will be stratified columnar in the way to form the static, to form the squamous epithelial cell. Then we'll get the stratified squamous keratinized epithelium. Here is the stratified squamous epithelium. Here is stratified squamous keratinized epithelium. Here transitional zone. Here the simple columnar epithelium will be the stratified columnar epithelium, stratified cubital epithelium, then, then the stratified squamous epithelium here, then stratified squamous keratinized epithelium, and continues with the skin of the perianal region. The rectal wall has the muscle, the inner circular muscle layer, will form the internal anal sphincter, that is controlled by autonomic nervous system. The internal anal sphincter is surrounded by external anal sphincter that is a skeletal muscle that is a part of the pelvic floor muscle the levator ani muscle here here contribution external anal sphincter that is a skeletal muscle or voluntary muscle this is 
this part the this part this is the in internal anal sphincter formed by the thickening and thickening of the circular muscle layer in the wall of the rectum so this is the colorectal junction anal transitional zone then squamous zone here then we we'll get the stratified squamous keratinized epithelium of the the skin here of the anal skin here okay so it will be from columnar then there will be transitional zone here we we'll get the the stratified columnar stratified keboidal then stratified squamous epithelium then stratified squamous keratinized epithelium and this is the internal sphincter that is formed by the inner circular layer of the rectum okay so we have some clinical application of our histological knowledge adenomatous polyp this is intra epithelial tumor that that may be the harbinger for the colon cancer so idea is that adenomatous polyp is in the epithelial cell so there is no lymphatic vessel so the colon cancer that begins here adenomatous polyp so the progress is decreased it is delayed so progress of the cancer metastasis is delayed because there is no lymphatic vessel in the intercryptal part of the lamina propria so once it goes to the near the muscular mucosa then the colon can cancer will be established that will be that will be metastasized to other part of the body ulcerative colitis is a chronic inflammatory disease in that condition there will be neo vascular formation neo lymphatic vessel formation we call it angiogenesis and also uh, there is formation of lymphatic vessel by vascular endothelial proliferating factor degf vascular endothelial growth factor that is released due to the chronic inflammatory process in ulcerative colitis mri these are the submucosal dilatation of the blood vessel along the anal column okay and that may be and, and that is painless internal piles congenital megacolon this happened when the parasympathetic ganglion is not developed in between the muscle also small part in the submucosal region so it, we call it hartsprung disease the newborn newborn cannot pass the stool megacolon may be caused by parasite like that of trypanosomiasis or chagas disease may be even caused by the amoeba pseudomembranous colitis is a condition when there is membrane formation in the large intestine due to the adverse effect of the the broad spectrum antibiotic and there is there will be flaring up there will be flaring up of some type of bacteria called clostridium difficile okay so we'll have some highlight of this presentation and fine point we have the the mucosa we have the mucosa has epithelial cell lamina propria muscular is mucosa and then submucosa that is dense regular connective tissue then we have the muscle layer inner circular layer muscular is external inner circular outer longitudinal muscle layer in between them we may get parasympathetic ganglion in some of the slides we must differentiate the large intestine from a small intestine small intestine has villi small intestine has penet cell small intestine has plica circularis these are absent in the large intestine crypto bladder cone is very much similar to that of the small intestine these are simple non branched tubular intestinal glands they extend up to, up to the entire lamina proprio almost close to the submucosa and they have the absorptive cell they have the regenerative cell they have the enteroendocrine cell and a lot of goblet cell throughout the large intestine we'll get a lot of goblet cell number of goblet cell is more in large intestine than that of small intestine in the large intestine lower part of large intestine has more and more goblet cell lamina propria yes in the intercryptal space there is no lymphatic vessel 
but lymphatic nodules are present at the base of the cryptosome tubercle, and efferent vessels are also present there. Myentary plexus, also called orbex plexus, these are parasympathetic nerve plexus mostly, and they are derived from neural crest cell. In their absence, we may get congenital megacolon. It may be damaged in some type of parasitic diseases. The large intestine is covered by serosa, by the visceral peritoneum, simple squamous epithelium, the retroperitoneal part, the posterior part of the ascending colon, and the descending colon. The posterior part is covered by connective tissue advantage here. We have also the appendices epiploica on the serosa. This is a pocket of fatty tissue. Okay, and this is these are my acknowledgement here, and that's all about the histology of the large intestine. If you have any question, please feel free to ask me. Please support my channel. Please subscribe me and have a nice day. Bye now.